Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly known as Zaire, is Africa's second largest country, covering a total area of 2,344,858 square kilometers, making it slightly larger than Mexico and almost one quarter the size of the United States. Kinshasa is the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as the country's largest city and Africa's third largest metropolitan area after Cairo and Laidos. It is located on the south bank of the Congo River, approximately 320 miles, 515 kilometers, from the Atlantic Ocean. It is a distinct political entity, similar to a Congolese region, with its own governor. Kinwa are the people who live in the city. Kinshasa is not only the capital, but also the epicenter of the country's character in modern Africa, with its dynamic and contradictory influences the one and only city not clearly identified with any particular region of the country. It was the seat of a long-lasting Zaire military government based, on the one hand, on the strength of the armed forces, and on the other, on a technique of political and social compromise that gained the rather grudging collaboration of most citizens until its later years. Welcome to Thinkridge Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship rather than global pity is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. History. Until 1966, Kinshasa was known as Leopoldville. The area on which Kinshasa evolved, as well as all of Maligo Pool shoreline, were inhabited in ancient times. The current city grew out of two villages, Nshasa and Ntamo, later Kintamo, which were dominated by the Bahambu and frequented by bake fishermen and traders. Sir Henry Morton Stanley forged an alliance with the monarch of Kintamo, a wealthy ivory trader, during his visit in 1877 and was able to purchase a trading post site on his return in 1881, despite French efforts to prevent him. Leopoldville was called after his patron, King Leopold II of the Belgians. By portaging prefabricated steamers through the lower river's cataracts, Stanley was able to open river traffic as far north as Stanleville, but Leopoldville remained insignificant until the railway line from downstream Matadi was completed in 1898. In 1914, a pipeline from Matadi was built to transport crude oil to the upriver steamers at Leopoldville, and air service between Leopoldville and Stanleville was established in 1920. As a result, in 1923, the Belgian Congo's administrative headquarters were moved there from Boma. Residential zones developed up around industries as they became established. Kinshasa, Barambu, and Lingwala zones grew up near the port in the Nintetan 30s. After 1950s, the workers of Limeet's new industrial district were housed in Lemba, Madit, and parts of Njili to the southeast, while the more centrally located communes, now zones of Dendale, now Kasavubu, Bandalungwa, and Ingiri Ingiri became the city's social and political core. Leopoldville was named the New Republic's capital in 1960. In 1966, the city's name was changed to Kinshasa. During the independence period, the city prospered, with its population rapidly increasing. Kinshasa became the focal point of the rebel revolt against Mobutu C. Siko Zaird administration in the mid-1990s, which was deposed in 1997. The city, overburdened with newcomers, entered a period of great economic suffering that lasted well into the 21st century under the successor administration, which was also besieged by insurgents. In 2006, the country adopted a new constitution and held presidential and parliamentary elections, the first free elections in more than four decades, giving the Kinwa hope for a better future. City layout Kinshasa's built-up area is separated into industrial, residential, and commercial zones. An industrial zone, formerly known as Leo West, grows around the western fringe of the center city, at the site of the first depot built by the British-American explorer Sir Henry Morton Stanley. 
To the east is Gom, a riverside residential and administrative zone that contains the majority of the European population and the Congolese aristocracy, as well as the central government buildings and embassy district. The eastern quarter, known as Leo West until 1966, is a prominent commercial region, with the vast boulevard Du Thirdejuin serving as the primary artery. Along Kinshasa's northern outskirts, the waterfront is surrounded with quays and big warehouses. Ndolo is a combination of port facilities and industrial units located east of Gom. On the east and west sides of Kinshasa, the poorest regions expand southward. Jili, to the southeast of Kinshasa, has become a residential suburb, whereas Kampoko, upstream, has been developed as an outlying harbor. During the 1970s, wealthy merchants and politicians erected houses in Binza, a region in the western hills overlooking the city frequently of remarkable magnificence. Kinshasa features a wide range of architectural styles. High-rise residential buildings, lavishly outfitted banks, stores, and the offices of large corporations and government agencies characterize the center of town. Some were built shortly after World War II, while the majority were built during the early 1970s economic boom. The Parliament, the President's Palace, built by the Chinese, the National Broadcasting Corporation's headquarters, Radio Television Nationale Congolaise, the International Trade Center, the Mineral Marketing Agency's headquarters, and an incomplete tower dedicated to nationalist leader Patrice Lumumba are among them. Spacious homes flanked by decorative shrubs and flower gardens, as well as high fences and iron bars, adorn the tree-lined, paved boulevards that define the wealthy residential areas. Tin-roofed concrete block buildings and multi-unit dwellings on dirt roadways, often inaccessible to automobiles, are common in less affluent regions. These, in turn, give way to hurriedly constructed shelters and rough walkways in the city's huge squatting zones, where many of the city's most recent immigrants live. People Kinshasa's population rose slowly at first, from 5,000 in 8089 to 23,000 in 1923, but rapidly after 1904. After 1950, it quadrupled nearly every five years and by the beginning of the 21st century was reaching 5 million, many of whom lived in squatter zones. Much of the population growth has been caused by Congolese migration and government expansion, but some of it has also been caused by the city's expansion. Kinshasa's population is youthful, more than half of the population is under the age of 22, and just a small percentage of the population is beyond the age of 50. People's migration from rural areas increased significantly following independence as colonial restrictions were loosened. Political problems, the economic deterioration of rural communities, a lack of amenities and possibilities, as well as the city's attractions, have all contributed to this rural migration. In its early years, the city received immigrants from Western Africa and various neighboring Central African countries. However, since independence, the majority of new residents have come from within Congo, particularly from the nearby regions of Bandundu to the West and Bas Congo, Lower Congo, to the South and East. Kinshasa's rapid population growth has caused severe challenges in supplying the city with food. There is a constant possibility of shortages, which poses an implied political concern. Since the late 1990s, the country's economic troubles have aggravated the situation. Traditionally, the bustling central market is supplemented by suburban markets packed with wooden stalls and hawkers and street sellers selling small quantities to passersby. At least half of the food consumed in the city comes from the Bas Congo region. Other foods come from further afield in Congo or are imported. South Africa has been an important supply of meat and fruits and vegetables flown in for those who can afford it. Kinshasa, on the other hand, resembles an overgrown community for the poor, whose residents seek for firewood from afar and tend gardens where they can find decent soil. The needs of this massive metropolitan population have resulted in widespread erosion in the surrounding countryside, as the soil has been depleted by overcultivation and trees cut down for charcoal have not been restored. Caught between extraordinary wealth and huge poverty, the majority of quinoa must spend a significant amount of time hunting for basics that are an inconsistent supply. Nonetheless, they have discovered a way to make Kinshasa a wellspring of distinct intellectual and popular culture felt throughout Africa. Kinshasa is the vibrant heart of the country's popular culture, with Lingala serving as the urban lingua franca. 
It is also the world's largest Francophone urban region, with French serving as the language of government, education, media, public services, and high-end business, and Lingala serving as a lingua franca on the streets. Kinshasa's Gom neighborhood is home to wealthy natives and expatriates. Kinshasa, while huge, chaotic, and frequently scary, is also a major cultural and intellectual center for Central Africa, with a thriving population of singers and artists. It is a city rich in cultural diversity and is known as the birthplace of Congolese rumba, a famous dance music genre influenced by a wide range of international influences. Music is a common social practice in Kinshasa, as well as a crucial enabler of intercultural interaction and social cohesiveness. Government and Services Kinshasa continues to be the center of the nation's political life, as it is where all important administrative decisions are made. The President's Office, as well as the Executive and Legislative Councils, are all located in the city. Since 1982, the President has nominated a governor and two vice-governors to lead the city administration. They are the leader of the city council, which is made up of the 24 zone commissioners, who are also appointed by the president from among the councillors elected in each zone. The administration is unable to provide adequate basic services throughout the city, such as running water, power and sanitation. Towner to provide adequate services have had difficulty coping with the rapid growth of the city, much of which consequently lacks basic urban facilities. Some locations have deteriorated housing lots and highways, choked oaken drains, and rubbish accumulation. Industry and Commerce Kinshasa is the most important consumer center of the republic, as well as the center of its industrial and economic activity. The city is home to the headquarters of significant public firms, as well as privately held industrial and commercial enterprises. It dominates the republic's financial and commercial activity and houses the headquarters of the major banks. However, the country's political turbulence since the fall of the Zarin administration in 1997 has been crippling for the city's economic activity. Transportation Kinshasa's transportation system is woefully insufficient in many ways. Economic troubles and a lack of foreign currency have resulted in serious deterioration, and there has been an ongoing need for spare parts and replacement vehicles. Kinshasa is adequately served by roadways, but its dense and fast-growing population produces significant traffic congestion. A paved road connects the city to Matadi, Congo's main port at the head of navigation on the Congo River, and another to Kikwit to the east. Most of the country's imports are brought in via the railway line from Matadi, which bypasses the rapids on the river below Kinshasa. Southeastern Njili International Airport is one of the largest airports in Africa. Across the Ligo Pool, a popular ferry connects Kinshasa to Brazzaville, the capital of the Republic of the Congo. Public transportation in Kinshasa comprises of packed buses, minibuses, taxis, and fila filas. These are trucks adapted to carry passengers. <music> Education The basic and secondary school systems are overburdened with insufficient facilities and teachers to keep up with population expansion. <music> Higher education institutions include the Kinshasa University, previously Lavanian University, the largest university in the country, a teacher training college, a national school of administration and law, a telecommunications school, and a fine arts academy, there are also social research institutes, political party indoctrination institutes, medical training institutes, and commercial institutes. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be on this list but is not, leave a comment let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing, and turning on your notification.